Hello everyone. My name is Amit. I have a total experience of 5 plus years in Oracle Identity and Access Management products. So today I am going to conduct a demo session over Oracle Unified Directory. So before going and start the demo session about this particular product, I just want to give you a big picture of this entire Oracle Identity and Access Management tool. So let's take an example. So today I am going to take the example of Facebook.com. Facebook.com. So at the end user perspective and the entire identity and access management perspective, I am going to map both the things and uh, trying to explain you the very complex architecture in a very simple manner. So let's start. Let's say this is the end user. So when you try to open Facebook, what you generally do? You open it in a web browser. And you enter the address or URL as facebook.com. When you hit on enter, the web browser internally going to communicate. Internally going to communicate with DNS server. It is going to communicate with DNS server for fetching the IP address for this particular domain facebook.com. So DNS server returns the IP address of facebook.com. Now once IP address is returned, the web browser is going to communicate with the web server. Going to communicate with the web server. Now, when the request comes to the web server, when request arrives to the web server, the web gate, I think if you are working in identity and access management tool, you should you are aware about the terminology web gate. Web gate is nothing but a policy enforcement point. So what web gate is going to do? Web gate is going to forward the request to the Oracle Access Manager that is OAM. So web gate is going to intercept the request. the request and then forward it to OAM. OAM then going to check with policy store that whether the request or whether the resource which the end user is trying to access is protected or not. So OAM is going to check whether the resource is protected or not. If the resource is protected, then let's say policy store returns that resource is protected. Now if the policy store returns resource is protected then on that moment of time the OAM server again asks with policy store that 
whether it is using form based authentication or kerberos based authentication if it is form based it is going to send this login form to end user now once end user is going to put the user id and password field it is again going to authenticate this particular thing using oem server now the oem server is storing policies and all the user details in the data source if you are working with oracle identity and access management suite then here comes the concept of oud oracle unified directory the oud stores the policies stores the policy user details along with for authorization it is also storing the group details group details so this is the entire architecture of whole identity and access management tool that starting from the end user it communicates with the dns to resolve the ip address then here web gate comes into the picture which is the policy enforcement point which is going to intercept the request and forward it to the oem server now oem server is going to check whether the resource is protected or not if it is protected then which type of authentication the resource is using whether it's form based or kerberos based if it is form based it is going to present a login form to the end user and once the user is going to put the details then it is going to validate all the details against the policy store so all this in policy user details whether the uh, user has the access or the authority to access that particular resource or not that is authorization all these things into the data source and data source is configured as a oud server that is a oracle unified directory server so sorry just a moment let me check this up here let me open a new window so the oud server so the oud server is going to store user details secondly it is also storing membership that is simply nothing but group group membership details that whether the user is a member of this particular group or not all these things along with that it is also using acl that is access control list that whether the user has a permission to look into this particular domain or not and many more so in our later session we are going into the details of oud server starting from installation installation configuration managing users groups etc so thanks everyone so we'll meet in our first video where we are going to start the installation of oud and then we'll go into the details of all the concepts so once again thanks a lot